Tiko. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another episode of Indigo Recess, and I'm here with none other than Josh Makazo. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing great. <laughs> so, like today, you know, in preparation for the set that you're about to perform for us, um, what was going through what was going through your head, and like, you know, how did you feel? Because, um, in terms yeah. of like studio sets, have you done this before? You know, like, tell us more. Um. Well, I actually, I'm a. I would say that I'm a producer myself. I produce all my music, um, and so I don't really have that much familiarization with performing live shows or live gigs. So, actually, I think. This is my first time performing with a with a band, mm -hmm. and I would say that this was probably the most exciting thing that has occurred within like the. I, I mean, even yeah. even though I put out my music, yeah. Um, performing live is something else. So right. it's been fun. And um, I guess this is something we'll talk about later. But you've not only performed with a band, but you've also performed with an orchestra before, and it's oh. something that people have seen on YouTube. And we'll talk about that later. But I guess All like right. let's talk about the first song that you're gonna play today. Okay. 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 First song will be Come My Way. Um, it's part of my my album that I'll be releasing called Gradient. Um, the concept that I have for it is uh, more chaotic rap songs in the first portion of the album. And then we go to R&B and then more melancholic sounds. It's just the way that things um, turned out in my life. Uh, it just so happened that my album rolled out that way. Okay. Um, subject matter wise right. and so Come My Way is a R&B song uh, it is I think the the second out of the R&B songs okay. so oh well, yeah sweet okay let's hear it
And we're back with Josh on Indigo Recess. And this was your first studio performance, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, yes. just tell me how you're feeling like right now. And um, if possible, just give a shout out to like who's in your band in the studio right now as well. Okay, I would love to. I would love to. I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling really, really happy about um, the performance. Uh, yes, it is my first uh, live studio performance. Um, and I'm so happy to be doing it with Stella. Robbie on the keys. Alex, guitar. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Billy. <laughs> yes, this is this is the band. Awesome. This is the band. Yeah. And um were you in charge of assembling the musicians together? Like how was that like? Oh no no. It was it was all Evan. Evan. Adventure Time. Shout out to Adventure Time. <laughs> Music director for the ages. <laughs> And uh, for, for what I understand, so I, I was just kind of looking you up online, you know, trying to learn more about you and your music. And uh, online it says you're 17 years old. So is that still the case? Are you older now? What's up? Uh, I, 17 is actually the age that um, I first released music. Okay. Yeah. So I, I first started producing music at 12, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. um, the, first, the first instrumental that I ever made was at 12. And I recorded over it. And I was like, in the future... I'll probably look back at this and be like, fuck, really cringe. Okay. And so then um, I waited a few years and then I recorded it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I released it at, at 17. So I'm 20 now. I'm 20 right, now. 20 now. Right. Yeah. And, and at 12 years old, what were you listening that kind of influenced you to kind of like do your own thing? Um, actually, musical theater. Okay. Yeah, musical theater. Um, I was, up until that age, um, I uh, was trained in musical theater. And then um, my brother introduced me to rock music, um, like indie rock, like like mm -hmm. the Killers and things like that. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't the genre; it was just the Killers. Okay. And so okay, I, okay. I really just listened to the Killers. Yeah. And then um, my friends at school, they were like, "Why are you listening to this stuff? Like, listen to like hip hop and like right, R and B." Right. So then yeah. yeah, I started listening to that and yeah. So it sounded like peer pressure worked on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess I yeah, yeah 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 but it sounds like the people around you have kind of influenced or I guess like the trajectory of your music and I guess like right yeah. now um yeah. how do your friends feel about your music like um you know what what is what is kind of like your social circles like in terms of when you release mm -hmm. music are they excited like you know what do they say when they hear your songs I'm actually I'm actually so so glad that you mentioned that mm -hmm. because um way back in the day when um I was first starting out this music stuff uh there are, there are a lot of like like self doubt. There's a lot yeah. of self doubt um, with releasing uh, music at some point in time, and especially with my first single when I was at 17. Uh, it, it's called. It's a track called "A While," and at first I really did not want to release it. Um, again, because of I was just like very self conscious about it. No one at school, at my school, was releasing music, and so it'd be kind of kind of weird. But then um, my friend Cooper, Cooper Eisenhagen, if you're watching this. Hello, uh, Cooper Eisenhagen. He he really was like, just put it out, just put it out. Because at the end of the day, if you don't put it out, then you'll be more angry at yourself. You'll you'll have more regrets with it. Yeah. And you know, the first time that I released music, he told me that it didn't have to be perfect. And that's something that I think is so important for music. Um, not everything has to be perfect. In fact, um, when uh, creating this album, Gradient, uh, I actually wanted to have some imperfections in the recordings, in the chord progressions, things, right, small right, right. things like that. Yeah. yeah. So like when you talk about imperfections, like what, can, can you give me some examples? Like, you know, what, what are some of like the little embellishments that kind of give that edge to your music? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually with, uh, I Just Want to Hear a Voice, um, that track in particular, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the outro of Gradient. And um, when I was recording that, I was very, very, very in my feels. Um, I just got back from like a night out, like with my friends and things like that. I was a bit, I was a bit drunk. I was a bit drunk, and I just, I don't know. It's like it's like second nature for me just to go to the mic and just start doing whatever and things like that. So actually, the last verse is all like off the top of my head. And so if you if you play back if you play back the song you can actually hear like like me sniffling in the background right. and, and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's just that's yeah. just one example. There there's a there's a lot of like hidden things about the album, but yeah. yeah. Just 
useless and I take it back It's all of these tears I didn't show it All of these feelings I'm holding back I've never been fair to you Cause I know that I had a choice I just wanna hear your voice again
So now that I guess like you've started performing with you know seasoned musicians as well in the studio, mm. um, were there things that you've kind of learned along the way? You know, in terms of like the professionalism that they've mm. displayed, um, the tricks that they've had that they've kind of shared with you, and uh, yeah, mm. just tell me more about like just working now that you've kind of like out of school, you're out of that social circle, and now you're around musicians as well. Like, tell me how that's like. Um. Well, when I was in school, I was I, I was actually so blessed to have this opportunity. But I actually uh, interned at one label, and then I met um, met uh, Jason Kelchin. Yeah, okay. Jason. He he really really implemented um, a certain standard of producing, um, also professionalism into me that I think was at first harsh, <laughs> at first very harsh. Um, I sent him a few demos one time, and then uh, he replied with, like mid. He was like, right, "It's okay," right, right. and I was like, "I was like, what?" The? I was like, "Like screw this guy." <laughs> but <laughs> no, honestly, I was like, yeah, I was like "Screw yeah, this guy." But yeah. at, at that point in time, he was he was like a he was like a friend or whatever. So I sent it to him, and then uh, because of the response, I just yeah. ghosted him <laughs> for okay. four months. I was like, "Right, right, oh, right, screw this guy." Yeah. And then uh, I hit him. I hit him up again 
I think it was like four months later with the entire uh, album. And then he was like, okay, this one doable. Can, 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 can. Yeah. So um, just being surrounded by people like Jason, for example, yeah. have really influenced me. Um, but that's just on the music side. I actually take more influence from my family. Mm-hmm. Um, my family and, uh, well, I'm, I'm finishing up my national service um, in uh, infantry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so I actually took a lot away from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what? Oh, like, like yeah. Okay. Well, um, going into basic military training, I made it a goal upon myself to try to better myself mm-hmm. because uh, before army, I would say that I was a bit of a bit of a wreck. People, people who right, yeah, right, people, right. people who know me would. But I think most know. people that age would consider themselves a wreck as well. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. And so. Um, I I really was like, um, I think th- this is something my brother told me. He said, um, uh, "Music is an expression of life. So if you want your music to be good, then live a live a good life, mm-hmm. right?" And at that point in time, I really don't think that um, things were going the best for me. And so, yeah. um, I really tried my best in basic military training, and then um, it turned out that I got. Um, Selected to go OCS and wow, things like that, okay. and so yeah. um, the things that I learned um, within OCS. Wow. I mean, looking back. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, looking 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 back at it now, I was like, okay, worth it, but uh, yeah, it, it's very it's still very tough. still doesn't take away how tough it is. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think coming out of it, you just learn um, grit, hard yeah. work, perseverance. Um, Going, th- going at things intellectually. Okay. You know, yeah. and so I didn't want to go at my music, um, like how I was doing it before. I wanted to do it in ways that were disciplined. Mm-hmm. You know, just making sure I go to the studio every single time uh, I book out on the weekends. Right. I just dedicate all my time to making the music. Like literally on the way to camp, I'd be on my laptop. Yeah. yeah. Things like that because we're not allowed to bring laptops in camp. Mm-hmm. And so on the way there, I'd be. Um, working on my music and then my, my sister would drive me okay, at the time okay, okay. and then she would then bring my laptop back home <laughs> so things nice. like, things like that things yeah. like that and uh, okay so so now that you mentioned you're in an infantry unit right um, I was an infantry unit before and I know how easy it was for people to just go out to the fields you know you're out you're out very often yeah, yeah. so are you someone who would like have a music idea and you would just put it on your phone while you're just waiting idly like in a field or like at a shooting range like how did you balance your life being like an infantry officer and also being a musician how did i balance yeah. it i don't know if i did honestly <laughs> like it was it was a lot it was it was really a lot um yeah. uh i think i'd be sleeping like four four or five hours no, no, not even five hours. Like, like four hours a day. Yeah. And then, um, because I'd be doing my work, and then the music work. Um, but coming out of it, I'm very, very um, grateful for the experience. Honestly, yeah. yeah. And you've had a lot of experiences yourself. I mean, half of my heart was also something that you recorded with the Budapest Symphony Orchestra. Am I right? To oh say yes. That? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, what is like the next big thing that you'll like to do? Like, you consider like a milestone in your career. The next yeah, the one next that I'm looking forward thing, to. Yeah. Oh, definitely releasing my my album. For nice. Time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I believe like this is it for, for uh, from us today. Uh, would you like to shout out your socials? Like, how can viewers follow you? I actually do not want to shout out my socials. I want everyone that's already following me to gatekeep me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ken. So you hear, you heard it here first. If your friends <laughs> hear of a really cool artist named Josh Macazo. Do not recommend. <laughs> Do not. Please, Do not, please, yeah. please, 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 please. And please. this is us at Indigo Recess. We'll see you again soon.